In this tutorial, we will outline in detail the steps needed to begin printing on the NanoJet Aerosol print platform. The tutorial will begin with an empty print cartridge and then transition through the steps needed to print features using the NanoJet printer. The steps to be covered are 1. Pressure testing of the print system. 2. Setting the fluid level in the atomizer base. 3. Filling the cartridge with ink. 4. Installing the ink cartridge into the atomizer base. 5. Adjusting the atomizer voltage to get good aerosol generation. 6. Verifying ink output onto a print substrate. 7. Basics for starting to print features. Before starting to print, it is important to verify that the NanoJet print system is sealed correctly and that there are no leaks. The first step is to perform a leak test on the NanoJet system with the ink cartridge installed in the atomizer base. The leak test is performed using the pressure transducer software installed on the system. With the cartridge installed in the atomizer base, the first thing to do is to replace the dispense tip with a lure plug as shown. The next step is to set up the pressure transducer software to monitor the pressure in the NanoJet printer during pressure testing. To set up the software, we will perform the following steps. 1. Toggle the NanoJet shutter setting in flash cut so the print off indicator is displayed. 2. Launch the Omega pressure transducer software of the NanoJet print system control computer. 3. Select the charting tab from the four selectable tabs on the top of the Omega software window. 4. In the upper left corner of the charting window, check the PX409 USB-H checkbox. 5. In the lower left area of the charting window, set the X-axis window time to 1 minute. 6. In the lower right side of the charting window, select the Start function to begin charting the pressure in the NanoJet print system. The next step is to pressurize the system. To pressurize the NanoJet print system, set the sheath gas flow rate to 100 sccm and observe the pressure plot on the Omega pressure transducer charting window. The slope of the curve should be linear when the print system pressure is below the maximum input system pressure setting. Allow the pressure to increase to several PSI and then turn off the sheath gas flow by setting the sheath gas MFC flow setting to zero. Observe the pressure curve on the Omega pressure transducer window. If there are no leaks, then the pressure should remain constant. The pressure dropping after the gas flow is turned off indicates a system leak. If there are system leaks, the pressure in the system will drop when the sheath gas flow is stopped. If there are leaks, the leak should be found and fixed. Once a leak is identified and fixed, retest the system for additional leaks. This result shows a leak-free system. Once the NanoJet system is leak-free, move on to the next steps. The next step is to verify that the water level in the atomizer base is set correctly. Note that if this is the first time the NanoJet system is being set up, the yellow power cable on the right side of the atomizer will be disconnected from its mating connector on the atomizer base. Before attaching the yellow cable to the atomizer base, be sure that the toggle switch to the atomizer is switched to the off position. Applying power to the atomizer without water in the atomizer base will cause the atomizer transducer to be damaged and the transducer will need to be replaced. To verify that the water level is correct, remove the ink cartridge from the print head assembly. First, unclamp the two toggle clamps, one from each side of the ink cartridge, and then remove the aerosol gas inlet tube by unscrewing the swage lock fitting. With the cartridge removed from the atomizer base, insert the water level gauge into the atomizer base. The water should be filled so the water comes up to the bottom of the water level gauge. Use only distilled water, not deionized or tap water, to fill the water reservoir. The ink cartridge can be inserted into the atomizer base once the water level is set. When the cartridge is removed from the atomizer base, the bottom surface of the ink vial should be wet when it is inserted and removed from the atomizer base. The next step is to fill the ink cartridge with ink. 
To fill the ink cartridge with ink, the ink cartridge should be removed from the NanoJet print system as previously described. If necessary, unclamp the ink cartridge from the atomizer base and disconnect the aerosol gas supply line from the aerosol gas input port on the ink cartridge. Next, unscrew the ink vial from the bottom of the ink cartridge and place the vial on a flat, stable surface. Fill the ink vial with 1 to 3 milliliters of ink. Before reinstalling the filled vial into the ink cartridge, verify that the baffle is in the correct location, approximately 3 millimeters from the ink cartridge inside face. It is also good to verify that the O-ring inside of the ink cartridge used to provide a seal between the ink cartridge and the ink vial is in place. Now the ink vial can be screwed back into the ink cartridge securely. Note. Do not tip the ink cartridge once the ink vial is installed to avoid spilling the ink. Insert the ink cartridge into the atomizer base and clamp the cartridge in place using the two toggle clamps. Leave the aerosol gas supply line detached from the ink cartridge. The next step is to verify the voltage setting needed to produce an aerosol from the ink loaded into the ink cartridge. Adjust the sheath gas flow rate to 100 sccm and turn on the atomizer voltage to the lowest voltage level. Observe the aerosol gas inlet port to see if there is an aerosol exiting the ink cartridge. If not, adjust the atomizer voltage upward by 5 volts and wait 30 to 60 seconds to see if the aerosol is flowing from the ink cartridge. If not, repeat the previous step until a dense aerosol flows from the ink cartridge. Once the aerosol is observed, stop adjusting the atomizer voltage upward and note this voltage. This is the best operating voltage for atomizer using the ink loaded into the ink cartridge. Turn off the atomizer voltage and reattach the aerosol supply line to the ink cartridge. Next, remove the lure plug from the flow cell and replace it with the desired print tip. Set the sheath gas to 60 to 70 sccm. Make sure that the system shutter is closed and adjust the aerosol gas flow to 6 sccm. Turn on the atomizer voltage and wait about 30 seconds. Place a clean substrate onto the vacuum platen and use the vacuum or tape to hold the substrate in place. Position the print head 1 to 2 millimeters above a substrate and open the shutter you should start to see a small spot show up on your substrate beneath the print nozzle. If the material output is too low, increase the aerosol gas flow rate until you start to see the ink forming a small drop on the substrate surface. Close the shutter. You are now ready to begin printing on the NanoJet printer. To begin printing, select the flash cut CNC GUI. Select the G-Code toggle switch on the front screen and open a G-Code program from the sample programs provided with the system. Once a G-Code program is loaded, position the print tip to the position where the printing is to begin on the substrate. In the Program Coordinates window, upper right corner, select the Set button and then Zero All to set the local zero position for printing. Press the Start button in the G-Code area to start to print a pattern. Print the pattern and observe the printed line properties. If a narrower line width is needed, the print speed can be increased or the aerosol gas flow rate can be decreased. Work back and forth with the print pattern until the desired print properties are achieved. You are now ready to start printing.